This week on Jerusalem Dateline, evacuations continue from Kabul after deadly suicide attacks kill more than 100, and private groups charter flights to get the hunted out in time. Plus, what's the future for Christians in Afghanistan? And a drug on the market since 1975 shows promise for fighting severe COVID-19 cases. All this and more this week on Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Julie Stahl filling in for Chris Mitchell. Evacuations from Kabul continue after the deadly suicide attacks that killed at least 100 people, including 13 U.S. service members. And now the rush to evacuate people under the threat of more attacks as President Biden's deadline to withdraw looms. CBN's Jennifer Wishon reports. President Biden wanted to get out of Afghanistan to avoid more casualties. But after the deadliest day for American troops there since 2011, more attacks are expected. And critics say America and other countries are now less safe. U.S. troops are continuing their near impossible mission to evacuate an estimated 1,000 remaining Americans and tens of thousands of Afghan allies under constant threat of another attack from ISIS-K or ISK, short for the Islamic State of Khorasan Province. We believe it is their desire to continue those attacks and we expect those attacks to continue and we're doing everything we can to be prepared for those attacks. The U.S. relying on the Taliban, a group that spent years working to kill Americans to prevent terrorists from entering the airport's perimeter. The president promising retaliation for the 13 American lives lost. We will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down. And make you pay. ISK is the regional affiliate of ISIS in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And while not as organized as the Taliban, it's much more extreme and violent. Some of them are disaffected Taliban that joined IS because they thought the Taliban were too soft. The jihadis have notoriously attacked a girls' school, hospital, even a maternity ward. They attacked a maternity, uh, shot to death babies, uh, pregnant women. The tragedy Thursday postponing the president's meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett until today. Meanwhile, critics argue the West is now facing greater terrorist threats because of the Biden administration's gravely botched exit from Afghanistan. The hundreds of jihadists released from prisons with the Taliban victory are already on the attack. More Americans will become targets and far beyond the borders of Afghanistan, writes the Wall Street Journal editorial board. A new poll from YouGov finds 68 percent of Americans believe the U.S. withdrawal has been handled badly, including 55 percent of Democrats. And now with just four days remaining before the president's August 31st deadline to withdraw, it appears Afghanistan has again become a haven for terrorists with America and her allies once again in their crosshairs. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. CBN's Dale Hurd has more on how the twin ISIS attacks in Kabul unfolded. U.S. officials say an ISIS terrorist detonated a suicide vest at one of the airport gates, while another opened fire. A second bomb went off outside a hotel about 300 yards away. The first blast happened at what is known as the Abbey Gate, where American citizens would line up to board evacuation flights. The victims were standing outside the gate in this sewage canal when the explosion occurred. The second blast near the Barron Hotel. This phone video of the aftermath is so graphic it had to be blurred. It shows piles of dead bodies. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby tweeted, We can confirm that a number of U.S. service members were killed in today's complex attack at Kabul airport. A number of others are being treated for wounds. The Taliban have condemned the attack, saying it occurred in an area controlled by U.S. forces. ISIS terrorism has been expected after large numbers of ISIS fighters were believed to have been freed from prisons during the Taliban's rapid advance. The U.S. Embassy in Kabul, which had advance word of a possible terrorist attack, warned Americans Wednesday to leave the airport gate immediately 
and be aware of their surroundings, especially in large crowds. Being part of these huge crowds that remain uh, around the gates and entrances to the airport is, is dangerous. Uh, we're obviously concerned about our own people as well. The acting U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan says Americans will be evacuated on an individualized basis. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says as many as 1,500 American citizens could still be in Afghanistan and insists those who want to leave will be able to. There is no deadline on our work to help any remaining American citizens who decide they want to leave to do so, along with the many Afghans who have stood by us over these many years. But it's unclear how Americans or our Afghan allies can be evacuated after U.S. forces leave in less than a week. So for thousands of Afghans who helped the U.S., they're now facing the grim reality that they may be left behind. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Even before the blasts, humanitarian groups banded together to charter private flights to get aid workers and others out before it's too late. The first charter flight left Afghanistan carrying more than 340 people just days before the explosions in Kabul. We formed a coalition of like-minded partners. Uh, most of us are faith-based and we working together to push ahead to try and save as many souls as we can. Charmaine Heading, president of the Shai Fund, says they're opening seats to citizens of America and other nations, Afghans who helped international forces, plus religious and ethnic minorities. Many of them are Christians now, but they come from a Muslim background and they are in fear of their life. They received a letter from the Taliban before they even closed down the whole of Kabul saying, we know who you are, we know where you are. So they've got them on a list and they're hunting them down. But a few days later, they weren't so successful when people ready to fly were put out of the airport and others can't get in. Iranian-American journalist Farnaz Fasihi tweeted about it, saying a 345-seat chartered plane to evacuate Afghans leaves Kabul empty today because they couldn't get through Taliban checkpoints and U.S. military gates at airport. While more than 100,000 people have been evacuated, no one is saying how many remain in the country. There could be thousands of Americans alone. According to the New York Times, Refugee and resettlement experts estimate at least 300,000 Afghans face threats from the Taliban for their contacts with Americans. Heading, a veteran humanitarian aid worker in places like Syria and Iraq, says she's never seen anything like this disaster. First of all, we can pray because we need a mighty move of the hand of God to save these people. But secondly, we need to contact your senator, contact your congressman, and tell them that you care and that you don't want any of these people that have fought for freedom and for what we stand for in the West, that have become believers in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and are now going to die. Reach out to your senator and tell them, do not leave them behind. She also warned nothing has changed about the Taliban. This is not the new moderate Taliban. They've already stated what they're going to do to the Christians, these believers that have run the underground churches. We know what they're going to do. They sent them a letter. They're going to capture them and they're going to behead them. We have to rise up as fellow believers, as brothers and sisters in Christ. The chaos and tragedy in Kabul forced a delay in the first meeting ever between Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett and President Biden. And we're also going to discuss the threat from Iran and our commitment to ensure Iran never develops a nuclear weapon. And, but we're putting diplomacy first and seeing where that takes us. But if diplomacy fails, we're ready to turn to other options. These very days illustrate what the world would look like if a radical Islamic regime acquired a nuclear weapon, that, that marriage would be a nuclear nightmare for the entire world. Iran is the world's number one exporter of terror, instability, and human rights violations. And as we sit here right now, the Iranians are spinning their centrifuges in Natanz and Fordow. And we got to stop it. Bennett met earlier with Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Before leaving Israel, Bennett said Iran is acting like a bully in the region and he wants the U.S. to get tough. 
I will tell President Biden that now is the time to halt the Iranians, to stop this thing, not to give them a rescue line in the form of re-entering a nuclear deal that has already expired and is not relevant, even to those who thought it was once relevant. Biden wants to re-enter the Iranian nuclear deal, but the talk stalled recently. Since then, Iran has a new hardline president and is rapidly advancing its uranium enrichment, far beyond what was allowed in the original deal, the JCPOA. Israel says it's only a matter of weeks before Iran will have what it needs to make a nuclear bomb. Bennett says he has a plan for Biden. We will present an organized plan that we have built in the past two months to stop the Iranians in the nuclear dimension and in regards to its regional aggression. While Bennett was in the U.S., Defense Minister Benny Gantz briefed 60 ambassadors in Israel. As a military background person, no one is seeking to have wars, but sometimes those in it. Uh, and we should not allow Iran to become military, nuclear military capable. Former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. Michael Oren says one of the ways to stop Iran is by hitting its economy. Striking at its oil industry would hurt Iran. It doesn't have to involve civilian casualties, um, but you would, Israel could deal a very severe blow uh, to the Iranian economy. Oren tells CBN News this meeting between Bennett and Biden is crucial for Israel. Israel has to make clear to the United States that it will never be bound by the Iran nuclear deal, that we'll never give up our freedom of action. Coming up, Afghanistan's tiny Christian community pledges to live for Jesus despite facing the threat of elimination. It is the most important archaeological site. Nevertheless, it has never been excavated. An almost impossible task. Temple Mount was the largest religious compound in the ancient world. It is the most politicized piece of real estate in the world. Leads to an improbable find. There is an ancient road, also 2,000 years old. That is the building which is referred to in the New Testament. That is confirming the stories of the Bible. Where did Jesus walk? There's no question he walked on these steps. You can see it. There's no way to refute that. They existed. They walked here. They talked here. See the evidence left by an ancient witness. He lived there. He saw it. He knew the details. And it's like the crown of our discoveries. May cause a rewriting of the history of the Temple Mount. And discover what was written in stone, secrets of the temple. Get your copy today for a gift of any dollar amount. Available now. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope. All in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. As we enter the Jewish New Year, there's no better time to explore the holidays of Israel. In CBN's free guide, Israel's Major Holidays, you'll discover why these special occasions are so central to Jewish life and culture. You'll even learn about the biblical feasts and festivals that Jesus observed throughout his life. Get your free copy. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash Israel Holidays. Afghanistan's tiny Christian community is facing elimination. Some leaders have already disappeared. Others fear death or that their wives and daughters will be taken as sex slaves. Despite those very real threats, Afghan Christians say they'll keep living for Jesus. Recently, CBN's George Thomas spoke with an underground church leader about life under the Taliban. Within hours of capturing Herat, the terror group's fighters were out patrolling streets trying to convince residents of Afghanistan's third largest city that life would soon return normal. Business will continue as normal, and people are happy with us. And with our services, they will be happier. Hamid has serious doubts about those claims. Right now, we fear elimination. 
the Taliban are going to eliminate the Christian population of Afghanistan. Hamid, not his real name, is among thousands of Afghans who've come to faith in Jesus Christ over the past two decades. We've concealed his identity for safety. There weren't a lot of Christians 20 years ago during the Taliban time. But today, we are talking about 5,000 to 8,000 local Christians, and they live all over Afghanistan. In an exclusive interview from an undisclosed location, Hamid told CBN News he's very concerned about the future of Afghanistan's tiny Christian community. We know a Christian believer who we've been working with in the north, he is a leader, and we've lost contact with him because his city has fallen to the Taliban. There are three other cities that we have lost contact with our Christian believers. According to Open Doors, Afghanistan is the second most dangerous place to be a Christian in the world, just behind North Korea. The majority of the Christians here converted from Islam. Some of the believers are known in their communities. People know that they converted from Islam to Christianity, and they are considered apostates, and the penalty for that is death. The Taliban are famous for carrying out that punishment. Taliban fighters are reportedly now going door to door, forcing families to give up their daughters, some as young as 12, to be sex slaves for their men. I have four sisters that are single. They are at home, and they are worried about this. David, a foreign national, has worked in Afghanistan for the past three decades. We've taken similar precautions to protect his identity. He saw the Taliban's brutality up close while living in Kabul during its last reign. Now comes fear of a return to the days of regular executions, flogging, stoning to death and hand chopping. They have a strict interpretation of Islamic law, not only from the Quran, but also from what they call hadiths, which are traditions, sayings and practical applications of Islamic law. They take these literally. Despite these threats, David says there's a hunger among Afghans like never before to know God in an intimate way. People are really seeking in their heart for peace, seeking for a true relationship with God, for meaning in life, and for an understanding of who is this God. Hamid is asking people around the world to pray for his country during these uncertain times. The Christian community in Afghanistan is strong. They are trusting Jesus. They are working with Jesus despite the potential of being eliminated by the Taliban. George Thomas, CBN News. Up next, medical researchers watch Israel as it uses COVID-19 boosters and tests promising treatments. Now, for a limited time, you can get five of CBN's critically acclaimed documentaries. Experience the rebirth of the modern state of Israel a historic bond between the Jewish people and the land of Israel cannot be broken. Relive the battle for Jerusalem in the Six-Day War. Jerusalem is yours forever. Discover how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. When people need us, we volunteer and we come and help. Explore the world of Israeli technological innovation. We're people of dreams. God gives us dreams. And that's really the roots, I think, of, of much of our innovation. And understand the biggest land dispute in history. Many Palestinian Arabs claim that the Jews stole Arab land. But is that the real story? This exclusive Israel DVD collection can be yours for a gift of $29.99 or more. Call now or go online to get your Israel DVD bundle, which includes streaming access. Here, we're committed to a heritage of rigorous scholarship dating back over a thousand years. And to a faith tradition dating back a thousand more. This is how we create a culture of inquiry where no topic is off limits. And a culture of hope. Anything's possible! It's Christian leadership. And it's changing the world for the better. It's higher learning. It's greater knowing. It's what makes us whole. It's what makes us region.
medical researchers are closely watching Israel as it becomes the first country to use vaccine boosters for COVID-19. And that's not all. Israel is also out front in testing promising treatments. With COVID-19 cases on the rise, Israeli healthcare leaders took the lead in recommending a third dose of the Pfizer vaccine. It's working, it's safe, and it's the way to defeat this virus. Although more than 60% of Israelis are fully vaccinated, this latest surge could lead to a fourth lockdown over the upcoming Jewish holidays. As I said, what we're seeing in Israel right now, even though there is a surge in cases, um, the level of severe COVID hospitalizations and death is much lower and people are vaccinated. Dr. Yair Lewis, a former member of Israel's national coronavirus response, believes there could be yet another surge. Lewis says while the vaccine is important, treatments are crucial. Obviously, developing therapeutics to treat people who have been infected is something that we should be able to actively protect people who have been infected. So we have to have a drug as the second line of defense. And that's the goal of Hebrew University professor Yaakov Nachmias and his team. CBN News met him last year after they identified that phenofibrate, a drug on the market since 1975, could possibly fight the disease. Clinical trials now show it's working. And we looked at 15 severe COVID-19 patients. These are patients that have to have oxygen. What we saw is that inflammation, essentially pneumonia, disappeared in just the first 48 hours. COVID-19 creates an overreaction of the immune system known as a cytokine storm. Instead of fighting the lung infection, it destroys the lung tissue itself. 93% compared to about 25% in the general population, could go home without oxygen support in less than a week. Nachmia says two clinical studies on four continents are also using the drug for treatment. One of the things that makes us very excited about phenofibrate is that it's, it has an exceptional safety record. The second thing is that it's incredibly cheap. At Tel Aviv's Ichilov Hospital, Professor Nadir Arbor continues work on an Israeli drug called ExoCD24. Earlier this year, he told CBN News about his first round of trials. And we give it by inhalation, it's very simple. So we enrolled 30 patients in the phase one. We checked for safety and the drug was very safe, no side effects whatsoever. A clinical trial in several Greek hospitals has shown similar results on 90 patients, with about 80 leaving the hospital within five days. In the near future, he believes it will be used as an at-home therapy and potentially a platform for treating other similar ailments. Still ahead, what happens to prayers in the Western Wall in Jerusalem when the cracks are too full? Thank you for watching Jerusalem Dayline. We're committed to providing you with unbiased reporting from the Holy Land. Through weekly broadcasts, podcasts, and online media, our vision is to reach millions around the globe with the true story of what's happening in Israel and the Middle East, all from a biblical and prophetic perspective. This is a big vision and is only made possible by the generous support of people like you. Call us toll free at 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash Jerusalem Dateline and make a donation that will help spread the light of truth about Israel throughout the world. Ready, set, kiss, let's go! Today is Protonicon! But none of you are as excited as me! Plans don't always go as expected. Hi, Hi professor. professor! I have a very special job for you and I need it done today. Today? Gizmo Go is created especially for younger children, teaching core biblical values in a way they'll understand. Fantastic! God wants us to be obedient. He wants us to obey Him. He wants us to obey our parents and the people that love us. Join the Superbook Club and get Gizmo Go, the Quantum Hotel, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Each DVD contains a Bible-based Gizmo Go show, a karaoke version of an original song, and much, much more. Join Gizmo, Tina, and their robot friends for all new Superbook adventures, lessons, and fun. We're all pretty excited. Gizmo Go, a great new way for young children to discover God's truths. 
Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Spice up your summer with these delicious international recipes. Introducing Operation Blessings free light and lean recipe book. It's filled with flavors your whole family will enjoy. Plus, you'll learn about Operation Blessings work, bringing nutritious food, clean water, and medical care to millions in need. Call 1-800-730-BLESS or go to ob.org slash summer to get your free light and lean recipe book right now. Visitors to Jerusalem often place written prayers in the cracks of the Western Wall. Have you ever wondered what happens when those crevices get too full? Take a look. Prior to the worldwide pandemic, some 12 million people visited the Western Wall each year. Many tucked prayer notes between the ancient stones, but this year was different. We have here notes from all over the world. Many are sent by technical means because this year, residents of the diaspora can't make it to the Western Wall to pray here. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, the Western Wall Heritage Foundation received more than 91,000 notes on its website, including from the U.S., Europe, and even from Jordan and the UAE. The Western Wall behind me is the retaining wall of the Second Temple from 2,000 years ago. When King Solomon built the first temple, God said his eyes and heart would always be on this place. That's why traditionally Jews and people of other faiths put their prayers in the Western Wall. Western Wall Rabbi Shmuel Rabinovich says this year they received many requests from children living around the Gaza Strip during Israel's 11-day war with Hamas. So what happens when those cracks get too full? Twice a year, the prayer slips are removed. Workers collect the notes with wooden sticks, bundle them in bags, and later bury them in the cemetery on the Mount of Olives. According to Jewish religious practice, it's forbidden to destroy anything on which the name of God is written. That means these little prayer slips are treated with the same respect as damaged or worn Torah scrolls and prayer books. Rabinovich says no one reads the papers because they're notes between man and his creator, but they pray that God answers the requests. And this year, they're praying that God would remove the COVID-19 pandemic from Israel and the world. It's a good reminder that the God who is watching over Israel and actually the whole world neither slumbers nor sleeps, and he's listening to our prayers. That's all for this edition. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and you can also access CBN content through our CBN News and other CBN apps. And don't forget to sign up for our email blasts so you can continue to receive all of our exciting CBN content. I'm Julie Stahl. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.